In today's video, I want to bring some new information to you about the different methodologies that we have to analyze the markets that go beyond price action. Price action is great, of course, but we need to give our minds some rest from time to time because it can get tiring. Just like with any other method that I'm going to show you in just a moment. My intention here is to show you a map of the different approaches that exist for you to understand and trade the markets. Even if you are a serious uh, price action trader and don't intend to use any of these methods, it's a good idea to expand your horizons and at least be aware that there are other ways of looking at the same problem. There is a good percentage of technical traders who suffer from a seriously dangerous condition, which is the complete alienation from the rest of the financial world. Weirdly enough, this sort of thing th tends to happen less with other types of traders. In other words, technical traders tend to know only technical analysis and price action, but other types of traders and investors know an array of different approaches, including technical analysis. Unfortunately, most technical traders are not seen with good eyes by the rest of the financial market because of this sort of stubbornness. So in the spirit of allowing you to break free uh, from the alienation that, ma that many technical traders suffer, I decided to make this video to give you some inspiration and also to give you some rest in relation to advanced price action stuff. The first thing I should say here is that in many occasions, the various methods of trading and investing in the market are intertwined, which is not necessarily a bad thing. For example, there are traders who use a combination of technical analysis or price action trading with fundamental analysis. In fact, that's a very common combination, even though it's not a necessity, of course. You should note also that what most traders call trading, industry professionals call speculation. And we have three main ways to act in the market. We have investing, we have speculation, and we have arbitrage. You'll see what I mean by these uh, three in a moment. We can also classify the ways to act in the market in two main categories, the qualitative and the quantitative analysis methodologies. The latter is usually referred to as quant trading. Qualitative analysis, as the name clearly suggests, is when you have to make some sort of qualitative judgment about the market, meaning that there is some degree of subjectivity about your decisions. For example, if you are making an analysis about the impact of monetary policy on the future, that would be a judgment about the quality of the policy. In quant analysis, we only care about numbers so things are much more objective. The downside to that is that in quant analysis, the mathematics is much more complex than in other qualitative methods. Let's begin first with the variations of technical analysis. We have modern technical analysis, which is the one every no everyone knows with the silly technical indicators like moving averages and so on. We have price action analysis, which is where we can apply econophysics to price and several other interesting ideas as I have shown in the courses. And we also have a third variation, which is called uh, quantitative technical analysis. Quant technical analysis is the application of serious mathematics, statistics, econometrics, and digital signal processing to charts. Despite the common belief that technical analysis is about mathematics because of the modern technical indicators, technical analysis and price action trading uh, is much more qualitative than quantitative. Price action analysis in the way we do here in the channel is very qualitative if you think about the formation of context, the, the extraction of the narrative, and so on. The quant variation of technical analysis attempts to use more sophisticated tools that are actually suited to non-stationary time series. One interesting thing to study is the application of signal processing to time series. It's basically the attempt to treat a financial time series as if it was a series where you have the combination of signal and noise. The goal is to separate the signal from the noise in the hope that this will shed some light about the future behavior of that financial series. There are some really interesting studies that have been done in this area with people using certain algorithms that are used, for example, in aerospace engineering, like the Goethe algorithm, polynomial smoothing, Spline interpolation, the Savitsky Gole filter, the Fourier, Fourier transform to study a series in the frequency domain instead of the time domain, 
and even some tools that are used to filter nonlinear signals from cell phone towers. All of these three variations of technical analysis tend to fall under the spe speculative domain. Moving on to the investment domain, we have fundamental analysis, which has a few interesting components. Many technical traders think that fundamental analysis is just a matter of looking at economic indicators, but that's not true. Fundamental analysis has three main parts, corporate finance, macroeconomic analysis, and modern portfolio theory. Corporate finance is the balance sheet analysis of companies to identify their ability to generate future cash flow. This is mostly done by aligning accounting with some mathematics. The macroeconomic analysis is basically understanding how the major global forces will affect the financial instruments. For example, the unemployment rate, interest rates, inflation, changes in the monetary policy, and so on. In fundamental analysis, the corporate finance analysis is called bottom-up approach, and the macroeconomic analysis is called top-down approach. So we have these two contrary vectors pulling and pushing each other. For example, if the macroeconomic vector is favorable to a specific company, and the balance sheets also show the company can generate future cash flow, the fundamental analyst will cons would consider putting the stock in a portfolio. The way portfolios of stocks are built is through modern portfolio theory, where the analyst will verify mathematically was the best combination of stocks for a portfolio to maximize return and minimize risk. Another school of thought or way of acting in the market is by quant analysis, which is the main game of banks and institutions for a variety of reasons. The quant world involves really complex mathematics and statistics because of the way in which deriv derivatives work. In the quant world, we have many types of spec speculative and arbitrage opportunities. This is mainly what I intend to talk about in the institutional trading mater material I'm creating at the moment. Arbitrage techniques, for example, are known to be market neutral. In other words, it doesn't matter if the market is rising or falling because the opportunity comes from the relationship between two or, or more markets. This is obviously interesting if you want to decrease your directional risk uh, during turbulent markets, for example. In derivatives, like options, for example, we can also remove the directional risk and trade volatility as an instrument. Please be careful when studying options because there is a, a lot of misconceptions uh, about them online. Most people think that trading binary options is valid or that options are meant to be speculated as if they were a linear market. Options are convex instruments and their main goal is to serve as some sort of insurance policy to a stock, currency or whatever it is that you trade. Binary options are just a character of the real world of derivatives in a very poor caricature, by the way. So stay away from binary options because it's a terrible idea. We can also use quant analysis to invest money in the long term using machine learning and AI to build portfolios of stocks or currencies, for example. A famous machine learning approach called genetic programming finds the optimal parameters of a strategy using a similar process to biological evolution, hence the name genetic programming. Instead of trying to find a logic of how a strategy should work, genetic programming creates a random population of bad performing strategies, and then it randomly mutates and crosses over these strategies so they can evolve given certain fit fitness parameters that are previously set by the programmer. After many iterations and several generations of strategies, the resulting algorithms tend to show much better results than the starting ones. Artificial intelligence can also be used to attempt forecasting price using neural networks. The way that works in, in rough terms is that a neural net is capable of finding subtle nonlinear relationships between data points, and that can be useful to spot future data points. That sounds like an excellent idea, but it's really difficult to accomplish something like this. As you can probably tell, there are many ways of looking at the markets, and as I said in the beginning, there is no bad side effects in learning about them, so I hope this video sparks your curiosity about these topics. If you have interest in a particular subject, please leave a comment below and I will make a more detailed video about it. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and wish to support the channel, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, 
share the video and leave your comment below. If you want to become a serious price action trader, check out the video courses I provide in the video description. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.